Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Ice 365. Today's lesson, I'm going to be covering SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records within Office 365. These three tools help you to authenticate mail, senders, and ensure the destination email systems trust messages sent from your domain. Implementing DMARC with SPF and DKIM provides additional protection against spoofing and phishing email. Sender Policy Framework, or SPF, helps validate outbound emails sent from your custom domain. Here in this example, we have Luke's lightsabers. Luke's has recently set up a text record in the DNS settings for their primary domain, lukeslightsabers.net. This record is publicly available to look up, and it's basically saying that all of Luke's mail should be coming from Microsoft's email servers. In this example, a sender in Luke's org sends an email to someone outside the organization. The recipient's email server performs a DNS lookup to see where the public's records are for Luke's domain. It can see the new SPF text record that shows the IP addresses from Microsoft servers. Since these records match the sender's IP, the message is approved and sent to the recipient. If the SPF lookup was to fail, the message would be likely marked as spam, so it would end up in the user's junk folder or in quarantine. It is a great first layer for protection, but SPF has its limitations. A good example of this is a forward of email. When an email is forward, it's possible the SPF will fail and create false positives. For this reason, we need more ways to prove that the forwarded email was still an authenticated sender. This is where DKIM comes into play. DKIM stands for Domain Keys Identified Mail. DKIM lets you add digital signature to email messages in the message header. Email systems that get email from your domain can use this digital signature to help verify whether incoming email is legitimate. Back in our example here, now Luke is going to adopt DKIM so they publish new CNAME records in their DNS settings. The records acts as a public key. Email sent from Luke's IT will basically have what you can think of as a watermark, something that stays with the email no matter what and also ensures emails have not been tampered with. When a sender pushes out an email to the recipient server, it's basically performing a similar lookup to what we had with the SPF record, and it grabs this public key from the DNS records of Luke's lightsabers.net. If the public key and the private key match, the DKIM results pass and the message is delivered. Lastly, we need one more layer to help us detect legitimate senders and avoid spoofing events. An email message may contain multiple originator and sender addresses. One of these can be the mail from address that identifies the sender and specifies where to send return notices if any problems occur with the delivery of the message, such as a non-delivery notice. This is the field that the SPF is performing checks on. There's also the from address, which is the address displayed in the from address section by your mail application, like Outlook or the Outlook client on your desktop. This address identifies the author of the email. Looking at this example, we can see the mail from address is fish at phishing.contoso.com and the from address is security at woodgrovebank.com. If the phishing address there is sending from Microsoft servers, then it could still pass SBF checks without checking the authentication of the woodgrovebank.com domain. DMARC solves for this. When you use DMARC, the receiving server also performs a check against the from address. All three of these services work together and you should set up all records versus just adding one like DMARC for instance. DMARC checks rely on DKIM records being set up for custom domains. SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records can be set up within your DNS settings for your primary domain. So you'll have to log in to your primary DNS registrar and go in to update those records. Microsoft has plenty of documentation on what those records should look like, so I'll let you follow that versus taking you through that experience. There is actually one setting that you'll have to configure within the Defender Admin Center for DKIM records. So let's go ahead and pop into that admin portal so I can show you that now. Okay, I'm here within the portal. I'm going to go under the email and collaboration setting to policies and rules. Under this section here, I'm going to wait for this to load, and I'm going to go under the threat policy section. Here, I'm going to click into the DKIM uh, section under rules. On this page, you'll see all of the listed domains that you have for within your tenant, and I can click into my primary domain here, and I've actually already enabled this for security within my tenant, but you'll want to go ahead and turn this on so that you have that enabled within your environment. Take note that before you enable this setting, you'll want to make sure that you add the proper CNAME records and have given it enough time for them to propagate. Otherwise, when you try to toggle this on, you will get an error message about 
the public access of those DNS records not being available yet and that C name not being published. So just note that if you get an error, you may just have to wait a little bit longer. Depending on your DNS registrar, you have some type of propagation time you have after you create records. So just note that. That's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in this episode on configuring SPF, DKIM, and DMARC records. Stay tuned for my next episode where we'll be going through the attack simulation training functionality within Microsoft's Defender for Office 365. Thanks guys, have a great day.